My name is Jane Cronat. I am the subject director for the Mathematics PGC at King's College London. I am also the author for the Cambridge International ASNA level mathematics course book, Probability and Statistics 2. So good afternoon. In Probability and Statistics 1, Chapter 7, you were introduced to the binomial distribution in an experiment which involved rolling four ordinary fair dice. You'll remember that the binomial distribution arises when there are a finite number of independent trials. There are two possible outcomes, let's call them success and failure, and the probability of success in each trial is constant. So suppose we have more than four dice. So I've got here a bag of dice. And suppose we suspect that one or more of these dice might actually be biased towards the number six. To prove our suspicion is true, um, with an absolute certainty, we would need absolute knowledge. Can't really achieve that. We can't roll these an infinite number of times. However, we could roll them, say, 16 times. So suppose you were to take one of these dice and roll it 16 times. How many times do you think you would need to get a number six to convince you that it might be biased towards the number of six? Who would like to start? So what I would like you to do then is to take, I'll give you three dice, three different colours, because that will make it easy to record. And I'd like you to roll each of these dice 16 times and record how many sixes you get for each one. Okay? Thank you. So I think I'll we'll start with the red dice. So can you tell me with the red dice, how many sixes did you get? I got four. Four? Five. Five. One. And one. Okay. So has anybody got any thoughts about the red dice? Because certainly that fits with Tom's prediction in two of the occasions, but not anyone else's. What about maybe the black dice? Uh, so I've got ten. Ten? I've got twelve. Twelve? I've got eleven. And eleven. Okay. So what do we think there? It does look like it, a very high number. It is a very high number, isn't it? Um, I haven't got a white, and white on white wouldn't work, but for the white dice? Uh, I've got none. None, okay. i got six. Okay. Got one. And one. Okay, so do we think the white dice might be biased? I'm going to say yeah. unlikely in yeah. comparison. Okay. Over the three of us. Right, so in comparison, because only on one occasion was the number, it was more than Tom's prediction, but slightly less than Priyanka's, less than Sylvia's, whereas the red dice, two occasions it was more than Tom's prediction, but not near the others. Okay, do you want to change your prediction? Well, based on this, I think I would go slightly lower than what I said, so probably more towards Priyanka's guess. Okay, so Sylvia would change her prediction? Seven or eight. Okay, lower to seven or eight. Tom? I think I would change mine probably to the same as Priyanka. Okay, so you would go higher than three or four? Yeah. So, seven, I think. to maybe seven Priyanka? Yeah. I'd say seven or eight. <laughs> okay, you would say seven or eight. So you would change it, but maybe keep it a, around the number. Okay, but you know, none of you, so even though the black, which you all seem to think was biased, was 10, 11, sorry, 10, 12 and 11, you don't want to stick with nine or 10. Yes, I think, I think eight, or it's, it's already enough to be feeling because we never got to eight in any of the other occasions. Okay. The 
advice was not biased. So so because that's why I, that was my thinking. Oh um, no, that's good thinking. So because these numbers were never as high as as eight, then maybe we can have lower that down. lower down is enough to convince us. All right. So maybe what we could do is look at some of the probabilities that we would have calculated, and maybe some of the graphs that um, you drew of um, rolling dice. I actually got some graphs that I have drawn out. Number of sixes rolled in 16 rolls of a dice. And up here, we're going to have the probability. Now, if we work out the actual probabilities, what we will find is the probability that there are zero comes out to be something like 0.054. So it's a very small number there. Uh, the probability of one is 0.173. Uh, probability of two is 0.26. And three is out there. Uh, probability of 3 is 0.242. Probability of 4 is 0.158. There. And the probability of 6, sorry, um, 5 is 0.076. So it's getting quite low. So the probability of getting 5 is down here. So we can see the shape. We'll recall that it looks the more rolls we do, the more times we, the more it will approach us something which looks a little bit more like we could approach a normal distribution for it. So we might try and just draw some bars around these so we can use these. So if we looked at this as a distribution and we started looking at the probability of up to a certain amount, what we will find is the probability, let's say we gather together you said the probability of three originally, didn't you, Tom? So the probability that we have less than or equal to three is going to be uh, 0 0.7291. If we write this out as a binomial distribution and we'll say x is the random variable number of sixes rolled in 16 rolls of a dice, then we've got x is a binomial 16 and a sixth, because we will always start from the default position that the dice is actually fair. So if we look at the probability that x is less than or equal to 3, and you will remember how to do this one probability in statistics one. So I'm not going to do it here, but you actually get 0 0.729. So what is that telling us? Well, if we wrote that out as a percentage, say, we would have 72.9%. So in nearly 73% of times that you will roll this, you will get three or fewer um, sixes coming up. So that's quite a lot of the time you will naturally get three or fewer. What about the probability that x is less than or equal to four? Well, that calculation comes out to be 0.887. or 88.7% of the time, you would actually get four or fewer. So let's go up a little bit higher than that. Probability that x is less than or equal to five. And now I've got 0.962. So 96.2% of the time, I will have five or fewer sixes. So how many 
does that leave? Well, if you're going to have six or more, that will occur in 3.8% of the time. So 3.8% of the time you will have six or more rolls of the dice being a number six, which is quite a small percentage. Here, you've still got more than 10%. You've got 11.3%, which is not very significant. So you could start to look at where these lines are. So if we drew a line, say, for 10%, so this is our 10% line, what you can see is that you have got some fives and sixes um, in that 10% line. But if you took this line here, as a 5% line, then the six is completely over in the 5% area of the time. So you'll end up with less than 5% getting six or more. So seven or eight, six, seven or eight to get that number of sixes. So this is a sort of significant point. We usually choose around 5%, fewer than 5% is in this critical region over there for being considered to be um, sufficiently m enough sixes to say actually we might think it's biased so the 11 10 11 and 12 sixes you got quite high it does look like that's not happening by chance the percentage would be very small would you like to work out those percentages now for me so while the students are working out these percentages, um, let me just say that experimenting with the biased dice have a, has allowed the students to explore the meaning of hypothesis tests, allowing them to understand the procedure that they can apply to all hypothesis tests. I haven't, it hasn't been introduced to them as a process where first state your null hypothesis, now state your alternative hypothesis, then state what you expect your significance level to be and so on. It's actually been introduced to them by picking up on work they've done earlier in a way that makes sense without being a process. It's made it an integral part of their understanding. The fundamental problem of statistics is or one that says, how will I know whether my experiment that I've done is representative, which of course you can't know that. But let's consider just one example of why this is so important. In a jury trial, the default position is one of innocence. The alternative proposition is that the defendant is guilty. The default position your null hypothesis, if you like, your innocence, is rejected if the alternative proposition, that is guilty, or the alternative hypothesis, is supported by evidence beyond reasonable doubt. It's this criticality, this region here, which is the reasonable doubt that we've got in our experiment with the dice. The failure to reject this alternative proposition that is to prove it's guilty in our jury situation, doesn't actually imply innocence, or in our biased dice situation, it doesn't imply that the dice is definitely biased. It just says, I haven't got enough evidence to reject it. So in the case of the red or the white, they don't actually know whether they were biased or not, but they didn't have enough evidence to actually reject it. But in the case of the black dice, they did. So they rejected the null hypothesis and accepted the alternative that it was biased. The alternative to studying hypothesis testing would be to put it at the end of the book. That would simply reduce hypothesis testing to another process, just an add-on to the range of content that they've already studied, rather than integrating it and providing meaning to the distributions that they will be studying throughout probability and statistics too.